Want to know how to sell your house for a maximum profit in 2022? Well, stay tuned to find out. Hey, it's Hal Cohn. And Chris Cohn with Cohn Realty Group. If this is your first time to our channel, please make sure you click that subscribe button, mm -hmm. that little bell icon so you're notified each and every time we release a new video about living, working, and playing in the amazing Roanoke Valley. And we're gonna give you some real estate tips here too. That's right. And if you're thinking about moving to or within Roanoke, Salem, or Botetai, please give us a call, send us a text, or shoot us an email. We'd love to have a conversation with you. So today we are at Moyer Sports Complex here in Salem and why would we be here in the first part of March or kind of middle of March now? Well because spring is about to spring, right? <laughs> That's right. I'm saying spring is sprung but not quite yet. But you know whenever we see baseball fields uh, covered up with practices and softball. and softball and soccer going on, we think about spring. Yes. And when spring arrives we usually see an upswing in what? real estate activity on our market yes. i mean yeah there's people they've gotten over the winter hump and they are ready to start moving and getting their house on the market and in case you haven't heard roanoke is mimicking the national trends with having it be in a seller's market which is great for sellers yes and we're navigating a lot with our buyers we've got a lot of people under contract yay mm -hmm. yes well we're done so excited but yeah, the point of being at this amazing softball complex, Moyer Field here in Salem, you said it was bustling with activity last night, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. It was covered up as I was out doing some uh, last minute uh, things for one of our clients as far as like running some water so we can get a well test done. Okay. I came back by here and lo and behold, the parking lot was covered up with activity. So, so with that, you know, the whole point is like we said, we want to give you some tips now if you're thinking about selling mm -hmm. here in 2022 because this, this is the time that most people start thinking about it. It's been a crazy year already, the first three months, but it's going to get wilder. But we're here to give you some tips and tricks to help make sure as a seller that you maximize your profits and you're able to make bona fide great decisions for you and your family here in 2022 when it comes to selling a home here in the Roanoke Valley and around the world. <laughs> you nailed it. The only thing I'll add is also not only do we want to help you maximize your profit, but also minimize your inconvenience because let's be right, let's mm -hmm. be real. Sometimes having your house on the market can be a challenge and a total inconvenience. Yes. But if you work with professionals and have a strategic plan, then it should be a piece of cake relatively. Slam dunk. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as you're thinking about selling your house, the very first thing you need to do is think about your motivation mm -hmm. for selling. So why are you selling and what are your expectations when you sell your home Absolutely. here in 2022? Yeah, I think this is a crucial one because a lot of our clients do want to capitalize on the seller's market. And hey, that's great, mm -hmm. but it can be a tough process. It can be inconvenient, as I mentioned. So if this isn't the right time, it's okay to hold off. Um, talk about motivations. Why do you really want to sell? And then go into some of those conditions of your sale, mm -hmm. as in like, what price point are you thinking about? And also, when do you need to move? Do you have somewhere else to go? Other things are gonna come into play, like how much money do you have to get your home market ready? And yeah. Yeah, am I missing anything? Well, you need to know how much you actually owe on the oh, current property. If you have a mortgage, <laughs> you're gonna wanna say, okay, yeah, I can sell it for X. But yeah, you know, that amount of profit is not gonna be worth the aggravation potentially. Right. So you wanna know exactly how much you owe on your home so you can talk about a listing strategy with your professional realtor and then figure out, yeah, if I make this amount of money, then absolutely I'm gonna get started, I'm gonna sell it and get her done. <laughs> All right, so you've chosen to sell your home. You've decided that you're motivated and that the pros outweigh the cons for you. So now you need to choose which route do you want to go as far as representation goes. Do you want to do it on your own and take care of all that stress and scheduling and everything that goes with that? And we've got a video that explains all that to you, so that'll be helpful on our channel. Or the other option, if you don't want to do for sale by owner, would be to do what? Hire a professional realtor. Yay! Choose us, choose us. <laughs> now we would love for you to consider interviewing us and having a conversation with us to see if it's a good fit. But truly, a professional realtor is, is so valuable, worth their weight in, 
things like your marketing approach and also just the whole strategic process itself and logistics and everything, even negotiations mm -hmm. and helping you navigate hopefully multiple offers and getting you to closing. We do this every single day and you want something who's someone who's a professional that's used to this and it's not their first time or you know they're just not familiar with it. Yeah, and one of the biggest things, you know, we see is that you want to make sure hey how are we going to handle scheduling appointments to come oh. see the home right so yeah. that can even get overwhelming for us who do it all the time so think about that and then the second piece of the puzzle when it comes to even talking to a realtor would be like definitely dig into their marketing plan like yes. how do you market properties to, to <laughs> maximize the number of eyes that see it online the number of people that come into the mm -hmm. house and actually can help you get as many people through it as possible so you can get as many offers as possible so you can choose the one that's best for you as far as price terms and everything so that it's weighted in your favor hopefully yeah and and let me just dig into that just so, real quick um, you really the the benefit of a realtor is for them to take the lead and do as much work as they can so what I was laughing about when you were talking about scheduling um, your own showings we have some people that the sellers are scheduling their own showings mm -hmm. and that is really tough as a seller especially if you're working if you're home all day and you enjoy multitasking and having 40 people bombard you at the same time <laughs> That's cool. But most of the time when we as realtors have to contact the seller to schedule a showing, it is very frustrating for them. And also they tend to have errors. I mean, sometimes you get double booked and I understand it's a lot for sellers to keep up with. So your realtor should be working for you in that regard, but also with the marketing plan, like you said, they need a very robust pr program. Ask them about it, interview various realtors, find out how they're going to be advertising social media word of mouth what their relationships are with other realtors mm -hmm. all these things are so important and then when you're looking at these multiple offers you know you you might say oh this one's got more money and this one's offering more money of course we're gonna go with that but there's other factors to consider that your realtor should be able to walk you through yes absolutely and one of my biggest pet peeves I just gotta throw this one in there is like <laughs> make sure when it comes to marketing ask them how they're gonna do the photo oh yeah if they're gonna do it with their you know iPhone 13 that is not a professional photography mm -hmm. photography and that is gonna be a problem for you I yes. guarantee it yes. you want it to look its best online because everybody's looking online or so. have like one or two pictures that's not a good representation of your property and I mean we've seen so many horrible photos and I sh I'm sure you have too because people are looking online first. So we recommend professional photography, professional videography. All these things are gonna make a huge difference in making your, your uh, property stand out and getting you that maximum value. Absolutely, well so, said. One last thing, let's talk about walking through from once you have a contract all the way to closing, having your professional realtor by your side every step of the way is gonna be huge. We'll tell you why a little bit later as we're talking about some hurdles after you've signed an offer. But we wanna take a second to, to touch on marketing one last time here, because it is so critical. And what you've gotta do is make sure that you are being your property is being advertised over multiple channels and right. platforms so your professional realtors should know all about that and then also don't skimp on those photos and videos and those types of things please use a professional so professional photography is key it's proven yes amen it's a must <laughs> uh, I also want to touch on two things here it's really important that you let your realtor know about any updates or renovations that you've done any um, mechanical systems or anything or roofing that Roof, you've yep repaired or replaced that's that's going to set your property apart for sure of course and then also you want to talk about why you love the property because that's something that we can weave into the description of the home and also as you're talking organically and sharing it across social platforms is it that you love having coffee off the back deck and watching the family of deer come by oh that was good <laughs> that actually happened or you know there's just so many stories why do you love the space why would you what would you miss if you moved and that's what we want to make that emotional connection with some of your potential buyers okie dokie so you have chosen the way that you want to be represented whether it's for sale by owner going your own route or you've chosen a professional realtor 
What you need to do now is start getting your home market ready. Mm -hmm. And there's two pieces of the puzzle to that. So the first one would be home improvements. Yes. And when we're talking about home improvements, we're talking about things like cleaning out your gutters, like if you've got leaky faucets, make sure you've replaced those. If you've got a stain in your ceiling somewhere, make sure you get that painted over. Right. You know, things that you see that are deferred maintenance types of things, mm -hmm. clean up outside, pressure wash the driveway, the sidewalks, you know, make it look good on that front as far as like deferred maintenance, take care of those things. And then the next step would be to actually do the interior and the exterior combined with professional what? Staging. <laughs> yeah, we recommend professional staging and that sounds a little daunting but really they're just consultants mm -hmm. we surround ourselves with a team of professionals that are really good at what we do because guess what we're not stagers we're not photographers uh -uh. but we are great realtors <laughs> so we have hey even if it's one of your friends if they do a great job that's wonderful they're interior designers absolutely so lots of people have right. great taste when it comes to that and yes. the point point of staging is to make it totally uh, to the point where the buyers could see themselves living there and they just go, ah, oh, I love this place because it looks like it's HGT model home ready. HGTV, yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of people walk in wanting that feel and that look. So we, while you don't, you can use what you have. Yes. I mean, that's that's what our interior designers mainly stress. Let's use what you have. Let's work with your budget mm -hmm. and figure out a good plan. But you want buyers to walk in and be like, oh, it feels so clean and light and bright and big. And so how you achieve those things is through numerous strategies like making sure all the windows and blinds, excuse me, the window draperies and the blinds are open letting all the light coming in make sure you've got a neutral paint palette remove some of those personal photos and of course give it a good cleaning the number one thing you can do is declutter pack all that stuff up you got to pack it up anyways so go mm -hmm. ahead and pack most of it up and um, yeah I mean it makes just a huge difference when we see before and after pictures when the interior designer gets in so home improvements and staging to get your house market ready is a vital step in this process yeah, and the three things I just want to reiterate as far as like the staging piece decluttering super clean mm -hmm. and then also a cheap method is to also choose a great neutral palette of paint which the yes. stagers can give you but if you can just choose something neutral freshen it up that's going to be a super cheap way to improve your your profit when it comes to selling your house yeah i'm always surprised how much these three things make a difference as well as just paint draperies and rugs they can yep. warm up a space they can open up a space it looks so good when you do some of these basic fundamental things all right so if you have been watching the market at all in 2021 and 2022 your house has been on the market for like an hour now <laughs> you've got 20 showing requests and you just got traffic just lined up around the corner <laughs> to come see your home it is pretty silly i mean it is we are just in such an unusual market great for sellers um, and buyers too and buyers, i mean you're still getting some yeah. appreciation here too so let's not say it's bad for buyers because no. it's not no it's just it's it just, just rough it's yeah, tough it, it can be a, a long game <laughs> for buyers in some situations but yeah it's not uncommon for some houses to go within a matter of hours mm -hmm. and some having multiple offers on it as many as 20 is what we've been faced with yeah right? 21 last one that we were put offers Ooh. in on so so oh. with that i mean let's just fast forward here right? right so you got 10 offers you got five offers you got one offer whatever it is you've got an offer in hand which mm -hmm. is a conversation starter for you and the buyer to see if you can come to terms on something that you like when it comes to price terms like appraisal home inspection those types mm -hmm. of things and you can have a conversation to come to an end goal that both sides are comfortable and happy with yeah and I just want to remind you that just because you have offer or offers mm -hmm. in hand doesn't mean that you have to accept no. those those are not set in stone um, a lot of people think oh well I have to go with this no you don't necessarily have to accept the offer and as a matter of fact you can review it and go do a counter offer mm -hmm. again your realtor will walk you through all these details but when faced with multiple offers we just we encourage you to work with your realtor because again 
that price may not be the only factor that sets it apart. Mm -hmm. um, other things, like you said, terms and conditions, like when they can move, and also mm -hmm. financing. There's a variety of financing options. Mm -hmm. So all these factors come into play when you're looking mm -hmm. and comparing multiple offers. Yeah, you got also like rent backs. Like let's say oh, you yeah. sell the house, but you need to stay in it for another 30 or 60 days. You can negotiate that. So hey, mm -hmm. I'll sell it to you, you close on it. Then I'm gonna stay for another 60 days. We're seeing that happen. Oh. And, and then one of the things that we like to do is we've got a spreadsheet so if we've got multiple offers we can put them in there so we can actually look at apples to apples as far as price appraisal inspection all those little terms that are super significant as well yeah and keep in mind what your goal is you don't you don't need to rush to make a decision you need to really think through it like do you have a place to go to mm -hmm. <laughs> and what are the terms on that so it's a lot to think about and consider but you and your realtor should be a great partner through this process so Chris wanted me to say congratulations you're under contract That's so exciting we love saying that to our sellers and yes. our buyers and now guess what you get three more hurdles to, <laughs> to potentially work through depending upon the terms and conditions that you've agreed to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you sound that make it sound doom and gloom, but, <laughs> but um, there are three more things that you want to be aware of. These are the next steps that are, uh, you can see closing in the distance, but there's three things you need to get through. So celebrate being under contract, but know that there may be some turbulence along the way that you're gonna have to work through. The first one is an inspection. So inspection reports, whether they have a reason, if it's contingent on an inspection report or not, and whether or not you need to make repairs. So that's something that we need to consider. And, and the way that our contracts are written up here in the Roanoke Valley, they're gonna be defects as defined in the inspection addendum. So it can't just be like, oh, the paint's mismatched, or there's yeah. like a little hole in the wall, those types of things. Those are not considered defects based mm -hmm. on our inspection addendum, FYI. Right, thank you. Uh -huh. And then the next hurdle, once you get past inspections, is going to be the appraisal your house if it unless it's a cash contract your house needs to appraise for that purchase price that y'all agreed upon yeah and the lender is requiring that right the mm -hmm. lender is only going to give that buyer X amount of dollars so in this current market some of the things that we are seeing though is that some people have enough money as buyers to put a large amount down and if that's the case they can do what they call an appraisal gap coverage and so let's say it appraises for twenty thousand dollars less than Ooh. the purchase price yeah but the buyer actually has the cash to cover it so if you've negotiated that in your contract then you're still going to get the same purchase price because the buyer is going to bring extra cash to closing so that's one piece of the appraisal part right there so right. just know that it can be worked through okay so whoo You've made it through inspections and appraisal. The third thing that you need to keep in mind and the hurdle you need to tackle is going to be making sure that the buyer meets their financing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the buyer has to make sure that they meet deadlines, they get the documentation, they don't lose their job at the last minute, right? Yeah. So, so those types of things uh, can impact them getting their approval. I mean, most of the time, offers that we have come over they've got a pre-approval letter right they've already talked to a lender if they are getting a loan and they're like yes they're qualified because they've given them all the documentation they need mm -hmm. but sometimes you get things that come from left field that will derail it so it can happen but most most of the time I would say 90% of the time sure. from what we've seen yeah. in our transactions it's not a problem but mm -hmm. it could be so just be aware we just want to give you the um the good the bad the ugly when it yeah. comes to <laughs> what you're going to be dealing right. with when it comes yeah. to a real estate transaction i always like to go in eyes wide open yeah so you've passed through all three of those or jumped over soared over those three hurdles the next thing is going to be closing closing is when everybody signs on the dotted line and my mother-in-law always says nothing good happens between said yes and signatures so you want to make sure that you hold those celebrations and pop that bottle of champagne after closing day and it records and it records at the courthouse once it records <laughs> at the courthouse it is the buyer's Yay. responsibility it's not yours anymore funds will transfer from their lender or from their account to the title company or attorney and then you're gonna have funds either you can pick up or they can be wired to your bank account yeah and then you get to hold up one of these Sold! Congratulations! <laughs>